it's a little acre on. I haven't fished here in quite a few years, but when I'm grass fishing, it's a real visual deal. I'm gonna idle around in the depth. You know, I think the fish are in typically that's as deep as a milfoil grow, most likes it's eight, 10 feet. We got a nice milfoil patch right here. Right there, you can see it all topped out. It's really thick back there. That's probably gonna be a good place to fish. But we're just gonna keep cruising. I just, makes me a lot more efficient if I can just take a lap around this lake. Like I said, four mile an hour. You know, visually look with my eyes at the grass rather than, you know, putting the troll mower down and, you know, flipping all the way around this lake to find those key little patches. I'll just um, lay a little waypoint down there where I saw some good grass. And we're just gonna keep cruising around, kind of mark, uh, you know, as many areas where I find really thick, nice looking grass, like we got another patch here. We'll throw a dot on that. Just keep moving, that way I can, this isn't a big lake. I mean, this section here is probably three, 400 acres. Like I said, we're just making a quick hot lap around it. I'm gonna mark all the best patches and then come back and fish them. It's really hard to do much with your graphs in this kind of situation, because the, the grass is so thick and topped out, you really can't see much. A lot of the lakes you go to, if you got grass all the way around it, like solid, pretty much the same all the way through it, the key spots are gonna be either hard bottom or a little depth changes in that grass bed, you know, foot depression or a little foot rise, something like that. But this lake, it doesn't seem like the grass grows all the way around it, so when you get in situations like that, typically your schools are gonna be in those best little patches of grass, that thickest, you know, topped out milfoil. Still got good depth, we're out in nine and a half feet of water and we got topped up milfoil right here. This whole little stretch along here looks pretty good. So something will come back and flip, but like I said, just gonna do a hot lap quick, kind of get the lay of the land, figure out where all the best grass is, and then you know really just concentrate on those areas versus, like I said, putting the trolling motor down and just flipping all the way around the deal. It'd take way too long. You could spend an entire day here looking for the best stuff when Typically, on lakes where the grass isn't thick all the way around it, it's pretty obvious where they are. You know, you're gonna have two, three, four little areas where the grass is really thick, and that's gonna be the stuff you're gonna wanna fish. But now that you've located, you know, what you think is the best grass, you gotta be pretty diligent working through here. You can't, you can't run through it real fast. I mean, it's amazing how small of a school these fish will get in. You know, it might be just a little patch of grass that big, so you really gotta be diligent with your flipping and um, you, you ain't gonna have your trolling motor on 100 ripping through here you know you really want to pick this place apart and like I said you just cannot get in a hurry in this grass this is kind of needle in a haystack fishing really picking it apart just being really diligent with your cast and not getting in too much of a hurry if you get in this place and you start making a flip every 20 30 feet you could easily miss miss a you know a mega school of bass so we've already gone around the lake and kind of narrowed this down to, you know, this maybe, I don't know, maybe quarter mile stretch. I feel has the best grass in the lake. Now I'm just gonna go real slow with my trolling motor and, and pick it apart and try to really find that spot in the spot, you know, in the grass. You know, if it's early in the morning or you got a little bit of clouds, a little bit of wind, um, typically, typically your fish are gonna be out on this outer edge. If it gets super hot, you know, real calm like it is today, those fish might be up in there a little bit. You know, they're gonna be 20 yards of the edge, depending on where they're at. But it's early in the morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay on this outside edge. There's no grass behind us. Right here, I'm kind of riding the edge of that first topped out stuff. I don't really like to get way up in there. There are little sweet spots you'll find way up in there, but the outside edge is kind of the place most of your bass are gonna be sitting. You know, right now it's middle of the summer, so grass is at its peak. This is when you're gonna have the best grass you're gonna get all year. It's gonna be in that July, August period. Then you start getting some cold nights and the stuff's gonna start dying off and you're just gonna get little thicker patches here and there. And that's where I'll uh, put that big jig to work. And the other thing is I like to make real short flips in here for multiple reasons. One, when you do get a bite, you know exactly where it is. You put a waypoint down on them. They're right here versus if you make a a fairly long cast, you catch one, hit a dot, it could be, you know, in a larger area. And uh, also for landing the fish, you wanna try to, try to stay as vertical as you can in this grass. If, it, if it's thick, I mean, I don't know how many of them I've caught, like right there, if I'm going down, I see like a little juicy clump that I didn't notice from a distance, drop right there and you can still catch them. They're, 
they're under you know eight ten foot of grass it's real thick um, you can get almost right on top of these fish but these spots in the grass you, you'll have a massive grass flap but a lot of these spots where you'll catch school zone be is the size of the front deck of this boat you know it might just be one little patch of milfoil but it's amazing how many bites you can get out of you know one little juicy clump wherever they might be and and like I said, lakes have got a ton of grass. Those sweet spots are usually gonna be, you know, a little hard spot in the grass. Maybe some kind of dip or rise. I've caught them on a little depressions or little rises that you wouldn't really notice. But like I said, you get on those lakes that are just have grass everywhere. That's where it comes down to finding those little hard spots or little rises. And those are really, really hard to find, you know, with your graphs once the grass gets up. I mean, it's different if you're traveling around the country to fish a tournament here or there. You can't really do that. But if you got a home lake or a lake you fish quite a bit, the absolute best way to find those spots is to go out with your side scan, either dead of winter, if you're down south. Little guy. A little guy and a lot of grass. If you're down south, it's gonna be dead of winter. If you're up in the north country, it's gonna be literally right when the ice comes off the lake. I'll get out there. That's when the grass is gonna be at its lowest point. And you can get in those areas, say a lake like this, you know, the grass is gonna grow in eight to 10 feet. If I come out here, right when the ice comes off the lake, all the grass is pretty much dead. I can go through these same areas with my hummingbird units fire up the side scan and find those little sweet spots, those hard spots that you're not gonna be able to see later in the year when the grass is all topped out like this. And the nice thing about it as far as tournament goes, unless, unless you're on a lake where everyone's flipping grass, when you find a school, you put a dot on them, they're pretty much yours. It's, like I said, it's such a needle in a haystack bite. It's really easy for guys to go through here and not find those sweet spots if they're, you know, don't have their boat positioned right or if they're making casts too far apart from each other so you can find schools and have them all to yourself in a lot of tournament scenarios fishing this way so you really don't have to leave your bait there a long time but you do have to make cover the water really good and not gap it out you got to really be diligent fish every you know six to ten feet through a through a grass flat like this another thing when you're flipping this deep mill foil I'll pitch, I want my bait to fall on 100% slack. See a lot of guys that are used to flipping shallower, they'll kind of just pitch their bait out and um, you know, not let out enough line. And it really doesn't let the bait fall straight into the grass the way you need to. Uh, a couple ways you can do it. I'll usually, when I pitch out, I'll just kind of peel off some extra line with my rod and then let it fall on that. Oh, good. I seen that too. That one. That's cool, there. Yep. Man, I found a scrape of them there. On the Tokyo rig. I don't know if you can see that. That's one little tiny clump of grass right there. I've pitched to three times in a row, three bites. Kind of fire drilling it right now. Baits are getting jacked up, but when they're biting like this, I'll just keep making that exact same flip. I've made that same flip of that clump of grass right there three times in a row and got bit. There's another one. That's what I mean, how small a spot is that it's so easy to miss them. It doesn't look like anything special. There's clumps all around it. But literally, there could be 20, 30 bass in that little clump of grass right there. It's four flips in a row to the same exact spot. My bait hasn't hit the bottom yet. Like I said, super easy place to miss. But and you just keep throwing back at the tore up grass. It'll float up right where you get a bit, your bite, your line's cutting all that stuff up. So 
If it's not real windy, it's a pretty good buoy marker for where to throw, but it kind of looks bigger now because I've torn so much of it up, but that was literally a basketball sized clump of grass right there that has, who knows how we're going to find out how many fish are in here, but pretty loaded up. That's the fun thing about this. Like I said, it takes a while to get a bite or find them, but when you do, I mean, you can, you know, catch 20 and 20 casts in the right spot, so. Yeah, if I, if I was pre-fishing for a tournament, I'll usually catch the first one. If I throw back in there and get another bite, I'll shake it off and then I'll put a waypoint down. But we're just out fun fishing today, so I'm just gonna sit right on this little scrape right here and catch as many of them as I can. And I'll double back on these places later in the day. You know, work our way through this whole grass bed and then before we leave, I'll come back and hit them places again. Seems like you can get a few more fish off them after you. The first time's always gonna be the best, but seems like you can get a couple more bites off them, you know, coming back to them after they've rested a little bit. But like I said, the fish are gonna be down on the bottom. This isn't big yo-yo deal. I'm gonna flip in there and basically kind of shake or short hop my bait and not move it a lot. That grass is thick down there. These fish aren't swimming 10 feet to eat a bait. I'm not gonna fish my bait more than a few feet in that grass, if any, kind of try to keep it in place and just make those fish come and get it. They're not gonna swim a long ways to get it, so your casts are gonna have to be pretty precise. When you find a school of fish, it's pretty fast and furious when, when you get them fired up and biting. So I like to have, you know, at least three or four rods on the deck. If you only got two, that's all you got, but I'll have multiple rods rigged up. So that way, you know, you flip in there, catch one, lose your bait or something happens, line gets all tangled up. You can just grab another rod and flip back in there because, um, you know, once you get them things firing, it's, it's best to just hammer on them as much as you can while it's going down rather than, you know, letting them cool down and trying to get them fired back up again. So I'll always keep, usually, I'll have a Texas rig, a Tokyo rig, and a jig on my deck at all times. Mix those in, but, um, you know, if, you, if they're really dialed in on one or, you know, if you've been out practicing, you got a tournament coming up, if they're, you know, you're catching all of them on a Tokyo rig or all of them on a jig or all of them on a Texas rig, you know, you might want to do all three baits no, all three rods the exact same and just have something ready to get on them and keep cracking it and it helps if you're you know fishing a buddy tournament or with a friend because you know while you're reeling one in he can get another one biting and that really keeps the school fired up longer than when you're by yourself or if you gotta sit there and mess around with baits after every time you catch one big one Nice one. Chuck, look at that. What we got going on here? Open your mouth up. Somebody broke that fish off on a drop shot. Scored a bonus hook. Nice. That one's on Texas rig. Just going down the milfoil. Got him on that ringed VMC. Punching good meat every time. Nice chunker. But that was the first bite we got right there, so start mixing up some baits and go through there and see how many we can get out of there, but solid chunker. The bonus worm. Oh, another big one. All right, definitely got a school located here now. It's two nice fish right in the same spot. Another solid one. Same deal with that, that ringed VMC, I'm telling you guys, it's, I get like deeper hook penetration on it. I don't know what the deal is with it, but see how it just gets in that good meat almost every time. And it's always hard to get out. Like I'm not knocking straight shanks, guys use them and other hooks, but like every time I hook one, it's like that, you know? And if so every time I flip with a straight shank, basically when I flop them in the boat, they just fall off, so. Uh, that guy stayed pinned on there. Nice chunky thick fish. But now we got the school located. I'm, I hit spot lock on the trolling motor. Got a little clump of milfo right here. Both those bites came out of. And uh, now I'll just get to working on them. Rotate through all my baits. That's the nice thing about that spot lock. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be making the same flip right here. And uh, you know, catch a few on a Texas rig and then 
We'll pick up a Tokyo rig and catch a few more. But again, same deal here. Something real subtle. It wasn't any like juicy looking spot. I mean, there's six, seven little strands of milfoil sticking up right here, but it's amazing what you can catch out of a little tiny clump of grass in the summer, especially out in this deeper, this deeper stuff. But we'll peck around here and see what it, milk this for what it's worth. I'm gonna throw this Texas rig in here a couple more times and see if I can't get another one. Then I'll go through a couple Tokyo rigs and maybe flip a jig in there too, see if we can't, see if the big one in the school doesn't want to eat a jig or something. You never know, it just seems like every fish wants something different. A lot of them will bite on the same bait, but in order to really maximize your school, it seems like you gotta rotate through baits. Even if you only get you know, one or two other bites on the other baits, it's, it's definitely worth having a little smorgasbord on the deck. So when you do hit on one of these spots, you can maximize it for all it's worth. 